Hey Ed Xavier, welcome to my Bonsai Retreat and uh, I'm going to revisit this one but only briefly because truthfully I still have no idea where to go with it but what I do know is it's been in this pot for four years now and uh, whichever way I go I think we need to get it out of the pot and my thinking is I may just go for a very safe pond basket until I can really decide what to do. What a surprise. I'm not going to do much with the roots because, as you see, everything's budding up. We're now the 4th, 5th of April, and uh, I want to keep it healthy. But there's tons of algae on here. I do want to look at the roots and just see what I'm dealing with before I make that final decision. But first of all, let's get this wire off. This wire's been on for seven months now, so I'll get this off first. What I really love about this Chinese elm is the amount of um, budding it does from bare wood it's always lots of buzz all the way along here, which gives me lots of opportunities to actually pull right back and use those as the new branching, which is indeed is something I may well consider doing once I've got this out. But Chinese elm just love to bud from bare branching. So never ever give up on a branch that you think's dead. Okay, wires all off, uh, battening against heavy winds. So apologies if we have sound issues. As I say, this is what I'm looking for potentially and putting it more upright. But first of all, let's have a look and see what this is really like. Very wet under there. That never bodes well. Bobcat root rate. Very, very gently. Um, I've got a good spread of roots, I can see that. I'm just going to continue to rake this out, wash some out, have a look and see what we've got, probably come back then. Well, that's um, come about quite well. Lots of nice looking roots there, all a nice colour, apart from that bit of wire that looks very dark. In terms of can I um, upright it a little bit? Well, I think actually the answer is yes. So I'm just going to Cut away some of these a little bit. There's crossing stuff. That's now I did say I know I'm not going to take away a lot of roots. It's going to be a massacre. Okay, well there we go. Still got a good set of roots. There are some that still need to be sorted, but enough there that I can get the upright slant that I want. It's be deep in here, so you can't see the base, but. Not about that right now. Gosh, it's windy. I'm going to bury it quite deep. What's important is to keep that upright structure while those roots are developing. As usual, dig it all in, make sure we've got no air pockets, and then uh, I might do a bit of pruning on it. In fact, I will. I'll prune back quite hard and then leave it for a year. Okay, well, I thought we'd give it a quick spin. This is sort of probably a front end somewhere there. I mean, already debating about taking the lower branch off. And I think we can probably make that decision right now. That's gone. And uh, in the spirit of cuttings, I'm just going to poke that straight in there. See what happens. With that gone, this one probably doesn't need to be coming towards us so much. And I've got lots of buds that I can cut back to, so I am going to really cut this back quite a long way and you saw earlier there are loads and loads of little buds these thing cork bark elm just bud profusely so leave a few bits on but truthfully got lovely little buds here here, here, that's fine. I'd love to get these ones here to activate, but we'll leave those for now. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, cut it quite a way back. Can definitely go further. Certainly this branch is too long, but um, like a lot of things, I know I can go further on this, but I think it's a little bit later in the repot cycle. That should be fine for now. And let's just see how it responds. The front is gonna be somewhere around there, I'd imagine. Give it a spin. We've got quite dominant branches coming back, which really 
does sort of limit the front unless you do something radical with it. So yeah, we'll put it around here somewhere. Cutting, I've obviously, I've cut that right back, so just a few branches, and I'm gonna put this in a plastic bag, get lots of humidity, see what happens with that. I think that's a much better solution than the, the sort of radical air layers I was looking at and, and stuff like that. I think, yeah, I can see a future for it there. And do you know what? It's called Buck Elm and uh, it's been with me from the start. So I love it. Anyway, what we'll do is um, we'll again leave this down the corner of the garden somewhere it's nice and shady, let it recover. And I'll tell you what, why don't we revisit this in a couple of months time maybe and see if we've got loads of growth on it. Because I guarantee we'll probably have lots and lots of response to this. So um, probably best if I hand you over to me in the future. Well, strike me down, it's the 17th of June now, and this is certainly looking a lot greener. I had every confidence it would, but it's always nice to see it looking this way. And I have no doubt there's a few of you there just giving it the old whore. Had me doubts for a while there, Zav, but no, here we go. So we'll give it a quick spin, just so you can see exactly how it's looking. This one has always sprouted well. See the nice line there, I'm so glad I did this repot angle and uh, you know I'm not going to do very much right now but there are a few pruning decisions I can make literally I'm just going to try and reduce with the usual thing where I've got three or four coming from one junction I'm just going to double them down and get them down to two if I can so let's have a look at just a couple of examples and then uh, we'll swing back when I've done it okay so we look here we've got one coming up I've got a nice horizontal one there horizontal one there so let's get rid of these ones here we don't want any energy being wasted where it's not wanted again we've got here that junction in fact we don't want anything coming from that junction so we will clear it away and that can be rubbed away quite easily and again our primary aim we've already got our branching so all we're really looking to do is to make sure that energy isn't put in place we don't want it again we look here we've got some upward growth We'll remove this upward growth and we want that to be the concentrating area so again just going the flats down and I'll keep just one or two leaves there just to give a nice flat leaf pad if it's not growing in the horizontal direction then it's not part of my design and in essence this is the uh, the, the really the, the primary thing with all elms and stuff anything that's going upwards we can just remove so we can clear this top growth here. These shoots, which I will want, but they're extending far too far out. I'm just going to cut them back. Just a few. Same here. Just to give me a basic leaf definition. And there we go. We've got this one here. We don't want it upwards, but we may get a leaf coming out from the side. We're just going to clean up like this. It's a slow process, so there's your pad. And uh, we've got another little one in there, which isn't really gonna be helpful, so we'll get rid of it. And as I say, I'm not gonna be wiring it, so that's the way that pad will work. Okay, now I'm gonna go around and do that to all these as well. Yeah, okay, it's, uh, it's near naked again. Don't come in, I'm naked. And it's amazing, when you start clearing up those junctions and everything that's going outwards, you do end up removing well over 50% of the green stuff. Um, but what I've got now is lots of growth going in the direction I want. And for the rest of this year, I will just let that stuff shoot out because I actually want to thicken some of these. And an example of that here, I've got two here. I want those to thicken up further up the tree I think I've left. Where have I left? Okay, here's an example. I haven't quite done the apex, but if we look up here, just, just right up here, I've left just a single branch there and I'm going to let that, I've left the growing tip on this one, I want that to continue to grow out, that needs to certainly double in thickness and then what I'll do is probably cut it right back here, start regrowing from closer in or even see if we can get some budding from there. And that's what I mean by at this stage, just looking here for little branches that I just want them to now extend out and thicken to match the secondary branches that they're growing off. We'll just continue here. Upwards, get rid of that. Upwards, get rid of that. We've got this one come out here, happy with that. Upwards, shorten off some of these ones. There's a big apical one here. I'm going to continue to let that one grow up. But I probably don't want this one here. So 
same here, just go back to two or three buds. Right, well, that's, that's pretty well all the pruning I'm doing. The front's somewhere around there. It's probably gone all the way back down to how it looked in early spring, to be fair. Except what I recognise now that you won't see is that I've now got some branches going in directions I want. I've got it at the angle I want. The roots are clearly starting to grow through nicely. I've got some, uh, definitely a few root tips that I can see. So certainly the uh, pond basket, may um, well, pond basket certainly appears to be doing something positive. Aftercare wise, well, guess what? It's gonna go somewhere that's um, pretty well partially shaded right throughout the day. A Little bit of dappled sun in the early morning, but uh, this will do quite happily in a shaded spot of the garden. And that also means that all of the leaves that have been exposed now won't get scorched off because this is a very vulnerable time, especially as we're going into summer. Although it is the UK, let's be honest. I don't, I think we had summer in April, I can't remember. Anyway, there's one more thing I do want to do. Need to uh, feed it up. I've got my um, bio gold um, tablets or lumps and bumps, throw them in there and uh, give it a good watering and then a good old ignoring, which I always find works well. It certainly worked well for the children as they grew up. Can't beat a good ignoring. Ignore? You can't ignore me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that little, um, that little six months worth of uh, journey through what was a very, very um, challenging cork bark elm. I hope you like the solution that I've finally gone towards on this new potting angle. And I'm so glad I took the advice of, there was one or two of you who said, whatever you do, don't air layer it and uh, you know what you were right and that's what makes YouTube so brilliant for me because a couple of you out there different people at different times stay that impatient hand and make me see the longer game so a big thank you to you you know who you are if you're still watching and uh, if you like this then obviously big thumbs up if there's any more suggestions for this cork park elm then you know what it's like whack it down in the comments and uh, if I get any interesting updates then hey Maybe we'll get that at Bonsai for breakfast, as a little one or two minute uh, update. But apart from all that, I wish you all the best for your week and for your bonsai and for your family. Happy bonsai and God bless. Cheers.